Do you need a good quality streaming mic that's not hard to use for your computer? Well, you're in luck because there's a lot of them on the market. What's up everybody, I'm the Derek Frank, and today I'm gonna throw another USB microphone onto the list that you might just be so overwhelmed at. I think this is one that's gonna make your list because not only is it really easy to use, but it also has a lot of extra features that people like me, or streamers, or gamers that need to have more channels and inputs and options for routing are gonna like. The microphone I'm talking about is this one right here. It's the Razer Siren Pro V2. This microphone comes in around 150 bucks, which puts it in line with something like the Elgato Wave 3 and the Presonus Revelator. Both are really great mics. I think the Presonus is a little bit more for audio guys like me. The routing is really good. The effects are really, really good. Has a great gate and compressor built in and a lot of options. But the software is kind of confusing and the routing gets a little bit hairy for people who don't know what they're doing. And then with the Wave 3, it's just a really simple to use microphone with great software, but it doesn't have a lot of the extra bells and whistles. If you're wanting to purchase the Razer Siren Pro V2, I have links below with my affiliate links. Those also help out the channel. It's just a little bit that goes to me but it does help me out when I'm making these videos on my own time. I wanna thank my friends at Razer for sending this microphone. This is not a paid review, but they did send me this to try out and test out and see what I thought of it. Now, how is this mic a little bit different than most? This is actually a dynamic microphone and it addresses the sound from the top right here, which is really cool because it puts the mic at a better angle. And when you have it on this base, if you don't have an arm like I'm using, it also comes with a pedestal base. And that pedestal base makes it really nice to put in front of you on your desk and keep it out of the way while still being able to capture a lot of your sound. The other nice thing about this one versus the Wave is the Wave only has a single button slash knob on it, and that can do a lot of different things, but you kind of have to know what those things are, whereas this has just three things. It's got a mute button, it has a headphone volume, and then it has the microphone gain. Very simple stuff to use. And then on the back of the microphone, it does have a headphone out. Now, some people love the Razer Synapse software and a lot of people hate it. I'm definitely on board with the, I like it a lot. I wouldn't say I love it, but I definitely don't hate it. I do really like having all of my Razer products in one place, so I don't have to open up a lot of different apps, but it does get a little bit glitchy with stuff sometimes. For instance, with this microphone, I've found when I wanna start using it, it's showing that I have input coming into OBS, but I can't hear anything through the headphone out unless I turn it off and turn it back on in the Synapse software. Now, while we're talking about the Synapse software, let's jump in a little bit and talk a little bit more about how it works. Now, this is the Razer Synapse software. On here, you'll see all of the different products that you have from Razer that are hooked in your computer and that are compatible with this software. And all you have to do to access each individual thing is just click on it. So we're gonna go with the Razer Siren V2 Pro, which is what we're testing out here. And when you click that, it automatically goes into the mic settings. So you have your two settings here. This is your gain knob, which is right here on the microphone, and then your headphone knob, which is right here on the microphone. You also have different sample rates. Uh, your options are 44, 1, 48, and 96 kilohertz. That's pretty standard. It is nice that it does go up to 96 kilohertz because a lot of uh, USB microphones maybe only do 44, 1, or 48. But me personally, I pretty much just use 48 kilohertz. Again, that's kind of a preference thing. But for doing video and audio, that seems to be the industry standard for me. On this page, you also have a high pass filter switch and an analog gain limiter. Now that high pass filter is gonna take out your low frequencies, kind of like the rumbling of a dryer or an air conditioner. And I think that that's a really essential thing. One thing I wish that this had that it doesn't have is an option for a gate. Now the microphone does have some built-in software that helps eliminate background noise but I prefer personally to be able to control that myself, kind of like on the Revelator software from Personas, 
because I can, you know, adjust the threshold, I can adjust the attack, the release, so I can really fine tune how I want my gate to sound. This doesn't have that, it's all kind of an automatic thing. If you're just the average person and using this for streaming or Zoom, Team, and Skype meetings, a lot of that software is going to have your compressors and your gates built in, so you don't really have to worry as much about that. So this probably isn't a deal breaker for most people, and it's not a deal breaker for me. I just personally like to have the option. The thing that I thought was a little bit strange is that Razer has that option with their audio mixer, which is a separate device that's meant for XLR, but they don't have it in here. So I would love to see maybe down the road they do an update. I doubt that's going to happen, but it would be kind of a nice thing. So next, what you can click on the stream mixer, and when you do, this is where the software gets really good, and you can kind of break it down into doing more things for multi-streaming and having multiple input sources. First up, you have two options for what you're going to hear in your ears. You have your stream mix, which is what is usually going out to your software, and then a playback mix, which is a second option. So if you're doing something like Discord and OBS and you don't necessarily want those to be on the same channel, this is where you can control that, but you get to pick which one you're hearing by clicking this enable monitoring. So now I'm listening to the stream mix, and if I click this one, I'm listening to the playback mix. You move down to the inputs, this is what is going into your headphones. So if whatever you're gonna set into your extra inputs is gonna go in here and you can control that. What's really nice with this, having a link switch, is you can turn this link off and these are individual. So this, this top one is your stream mix and the bottom one is your playback mix. So you can mix the two of them individually or you can link them together and keep it an even sound. That same goes for the microphone setting itself. This is where the software gets really, really good. All you have to do is go down to add a new input and you have so many different options of what you can control. It's almost endless for what is on your computer. This is really great if you have other audio interfaces or different sources of your audio like Spotify, or YouTube music or whatever you're using to stream audio. Uh, so what you can do here is you can click these different things and these are your different sources. And once you keep adding these, you can add a ton of different sources. It's almost endless. And then you can even come down here and like I have my Elgato cam link. I can even, I can even add, add that, that as a separate, as a separate audio, audio source. source. And you can, and you can see, see my camera, camera is, picking is picking up that, up that audio, audio now. now. I'm going to take that off because it might have messed up my audio on this recording. I don't know because I have it. all of the audio you're listening to is going through this into OBS. So you might be wondering, how do I control all of these sources? Well, all you have to do is come up to the open window sound mixer options. In here, you're going to see all of those different settings and all of those different sends. So for instance, I've got my Razer Synapse software. Now you can control where it's going. So I would maybe want this uh, going to Aux 3 of the Razer Siren. And maybe I want OBS to go to headphones only. There's almost endless possibilities of how you can route this with the software. As far as I know, this is probably the most expansive software as far as adding a lot of different audio sources. Now, if that's too confusing for you, again, you don't have to do all this stuff. You can keep it very, very simple by just having everything that's defaulted on the software. Now, let's talk about the build quality of this microphone. I think this is one of the really great pluses for this microphone because it's a really heavy duty metal construction and it has a really great frame that holds the microphone. It also has an internal windscreen. It also has an internal windscreen and an internal shock absorber. I did notice that if you tap on the microphone or around it, it gets a little bit of volume, but not nearly as bad as some of the other USB microphones that I've used and have tested. It comes with a really good quality braided cable and almost all Razer products come with these, but this one is nice because it has a special fitting that goes in and fits really tight into the back of the microphone, but any USB-C cable will work with this still. So if you lose that cable or something happens to it, 
you're not out of luck. You can just use any USB-C cable. It's just not gonna fit super tight like the one that they send it with. And finally, it comes with this extra little windscreen. Not sure why you would need this because if it has an internal one, I guess, you know, if, if you want just a little bit more of a pop filter, then this might help. I'm not gonna use it. I kind of think it's unnecessary for this microphone. Now, some of the cons with this microphone. The software, like I had mentioned earlier, gets a little bit clunky and there is some glitchy stuff with it. The one nice thing is Razer is constantly updating it. So I do feel like there have been good changes made and they continue to make changes. I wish that it had a built-in equalizer. This does have the option to add an equalizer through all of the different routing options, but that's a lot of work. And for the average person that doesn't know how to do all that routing, it's going to be way too much work and not worth it. Um, it is a little bit more tinny. It doesn't have as much of that bass, but that comes with the style of microphone being a dynamic microphone. You're going to hear more of that stuff in there. If you're using something like OBS, you can add the equalizer in OBS and you can kind of fix up that audio. Also your software that's going to be doing your meetings like Zoom, Skype, Teams, and other software like that is probably going to clean up the audio pretty well for you. Is the audio quality without the EQ another deal breaker? Absolutely not. I still think it's a really good sounding microphone, especially for $150 with all the extra software options that you get and the build quality. I feel like if you dropped this microphone, it wouldn't do a thing to it because it is built like a tank. It is super heavy duty. Now, do you think that the Razer Siren Pro V2 is going to hold up to something like the Elgato Wave 3? So do you think that the Razer Siren Pro V2 is going to hold up to other USB microphones out there? I think that it absolutely can fit into your setup for a lot of reasons that I've mentioned. It has a really good size, it's not too big, it has the top address so it is easy to place it on your desk or on an arm like I've got it right now. The software is great, it's really expansive, but there are a couple downfalls like I had mentioned as well and that's that sometimes the software gets a little bit clunky, there's no gate that you can control and there's no EQ that you can control without doing routing. That stuff can all be cleared up in something like OBS, not that big of a deal, but if you're looking for plug and play, this does sound good right out of the box and you have a lot of options to grow with the microphone as you grow with streaming or whatever it is you're using it for. Thank you all so much for all of the continued growth and support that you've given this channel. It means so much to me. So like always, take care.